Hey crafters, in today's tutorial, you will learn how to create a colored doormat with your Cricut featuring this adorable watermelon design. All the products in today's video will be linked in the video description because trust me, you're gonna wanna know how to get this vibrant color onto your doormat and make it last. So let's get straight into the tutorial. As always, the first step is to open Cricut Design Space and to create a template. Choose the Shapes button and adjust the size to the size of the doormat. I always purchase the same size doormat. It is 30 by 18 inches. And I like to change the color because again, I'm a visual person. The next step is to type out the text. I chose the word hi. It was so simple. All I did was choose the text button, type out hi with an exclamation point, and then chose one of my favorite fonts that I have recently recently purchased from Creative Fabrica. And to make it a little bit thicker, we will use the offset hack. I think I use this hack in almost every tutorial and every Cricut project now. It is such a great hack. So if you need a more in-depth process and tutorial on how to do that, I will link the Cricut hack video that I mentioned it here. Next, it's time to create our watermelons. You will choose the shapes button and they actually have a half circle, half moon, whatever you wanna call it, in the free shapes section. So that's what we're going to choose today. I adjusted the size and flipped it. And then of course, change the color. This will help us visualize each individual layer. So there's going to be three layers in total technically. There's going to be the pink layer, which is the bulk of the watermelon, then the white layer, which is kind of that lighter white part of the watermelon, and then the green part, which is the outer part. Some people just do the pink and green. I want it to be a little extra and do pink, white, and green. The easiest way to do this is to use the offset tool. Please make sure that you don't round out the corners. So I will select the one on the the right which it shows it's a very sharp edge and also make sure that the distance isn't too small because we want a good amount of area to paint i made the white area a little bit smaller and then the green part a little bit bigger because technically that's kind of how it looks when you have a sliced watermelon and since i didn't want the top part of the watermelon to be showing i ended up slicing it with another rectangle but to make sure you slice each individual layer the same way i made a square adjusted the size duplicated three of them and then centered each and every one of them so we're in the same spot and then I individually chose each layer with that one square so you'll see I chose one of the gray squares and then I selected the pink one and sliced it then I removed the extras and then I repeated the exact same step for the white layer and then the green layer So now they are all the same height and you have a cute little watermelon slice. To get the little seeds, really easy hack. If you go into the images part and then select water drop, it looks like a seed and you can remove that little, what is it called? You can remove the little extra piece by clicking on the contour button and selecting it and bam, you got yourself a watermelon seed. Next, you will size each seed. This part, you really can do anything. You can do multiple seeds in different directions, different areas. I ended up doing seven seeds in total, but again, you can do something completely different or you could do no seeds at all. But I tilted each one slightly and aligned each seed so everything would be aligned and cleaned. Then from there, I like to group everything. When you make it, you're not going to keep it grouped. I just like to group it all and size it so I can visually see where I'm going to put each watermelon. I ended up doing five watermelons. This part I think was the most tedious part because I didn't know how to put each watermelon on the mat. I wanted them all to look aesthetically pleasing but all in different ways. So this part will take some time but lucky for you if you're following this tutorial it will take you a few seconds because I found that this design was perfect. So I flipped some to the right, adjusted some to the left, I flipped one over. So now this step is very important because we are painting this design onto the mat. Therefore, we need to make sure that it is cut correctly. And the way to do that is you're going to attach all of those three layers except for the seeds. So you're going to attach the pink, the green, and the white layer. They're going to all change into the same color. Don't worry about that. And then I'm going to duplicate that five times. Thank you. 
And then from there, I united those seeds and duplicated it five times. So now you have five watermelons attached and then you have the five seeds united and the text high. From there, we are ready to click make it and adjust it on the mat. You might have to do some finagling and move some around. You can see it was a little tight on this one and I didn't feel like bringing out my 12 by 24 mat. So the watermelons were fine on each mat, but I had to move that one seed from mat one to mat two. After I did some finagling, we will click continue and then connect our Cricut to our device. Now today we are using permanent adhesive vinyl. So I'm going to set the base material to premium vinyl. It is my favorite setting when working with adhesive vinyl. If you are a beloved doormat maker and you've watched my previous doormat video, I buy adhesive vinyl rolls in bulk and I don't care about the color because again, the vinyl is simply being used as a stencil. I had this leftover red and I have a lot of white, so that's what I'm using today. We will let the Cricut cut everything. This is going to take some time because it is a bigger design and we have a lot of details, so be patient. The next step is so very important and it is weeding, but it is how you weed this design. With the text, you will weed the actual word because again, we're painting that word and using the vinyl as a stencil. So weed the seeds and the text. We got five of them, so we're going through them. This is how your watermelon should look like. I weeded the pink part and the green part of the watermelon and then kept that white part. I found that it was easiest to do the white part last and paint the pink and green parts first. So we'll weed all five of the watermelon stencils. And now you have all these lovely stencils ready to be placed on our doormat. So let's head outside. This is my little setup. I have some newspaper underneath with my doormat. I propped my phone up so I can see exactly where I wanted to place each watermelon. This will take some time and some finagling. So be patient because we want it to be absolutely perfect. Once you have your watermelons in place, you will see that some of the vinyl does overlap. You can see that the bottom of the white one does overlap. So I'm just going to cut that a bit because I end up taping it later. So there's no paint on the actual doormat. So if you need to cut some extra pieces or areas of the vinyl, that's totally okay. Now we can move on to using our Glad Press and Seal. Again, if you've watched my previous doormat tutorial, you know that I absolutely hate using transfer tape with doormats because it is a pain in the butt. So we will apply it just like we would with any other regular transfer tape and then flip over the design and we can remove the Glad Press and Seal. The Glad Press and Seal just doesn't press onto the vinyl as much and it makes it easier for applying and removing. It saves a lot, a lot of time. I will repeat the exact same steps for all of the other watermelons. Now that everything is in place, I'm going to head and frog tape this doormat up. I am a very messy painter, and the last thing you want is to get paint onto the areas of the doormat that you don't want paint. Frog tape is your best friend, and now it's time to paint. This was the first time I even opened the paint. I didn't even see what it looked like when I ordered it online, and I'm so very pleased with this color. It was the most vibrant pink slash red color, and guys, this paint is amazing. Amazing. It hardened on the doormat so much. You didn't even have to seal the doormat if you didn't want to. So the exact paint color and all of the specs of it will be linked in the video description. Next, I'm going to let the pink parts dry and I'm going to paint the high with black flex seal. I usually paint it with black paint first and then black flex seal. However, I did not have black paint in time for this video, but I did order it after. So normally I would paint with regular black paint, two coats, and then one coat of flex seal but this time I did about three coats of flex seal so it was a really dark black so basically don't do what I did with the text in this video but it still came out good 
And when you're done painting, immediately remove the stencil. Next, I'm going to paint the green part. I loved using this stippling brush. This brush is also great for text and smaller areas. Be sure to not get any green on the pink area, again, which is why I love the stippling brush so much because it's very narrow. So you'll repeat the same process for all of the other watermelons. All right, so I let the paint dry, came back out after the sun went down, and I love it so much. So now we are going to remove the stencil. Guys, I officially picked the worst day to make these, the, the worst day to make this doormat, but you know what? It's gonna be worth it. It is the hottest day, bugs are everywhere. Oh my God, sweating, I'm drenched. So day one is officially finished. We have painted the pink and the green and the black high. I love it so much. So this is going to dry for the next 24 hours. All right, is the next day and we are working inside because we did not want to work in 90 degree weather again. Today, we're going to paint the white part of the watermelon. I have these teeny tiny brushes that I ordered from Amazon, I think honestly two years ago. Best purchase ever because they were so inexpensive and I have so much left over. But this was perfect because it was just the right size for the white area. Area. So I'll continue painting all of the white areas. I ended up doing two coats and that was all I did for day two because I was running out of time and I did this at night. So we are going to move on. So day three, I'm going to paint the seeds and seal. So I did all of these. And it's easy because you don't even need transfer tape. You could just remove this. So I'm going to show you how I did all of these really quick. So you'll need this. You will need a ruler and some frog tape because you know me. We're going to take this, that little corner. I'm just going to remove it like this. And make sure the seeds are going up. So like this one's down. This one's, those are the sides, but this one is going up. And then from there, you're just gonna measure and see where this fits. I like to measure from the top right here. So from like the teardrop from like the end of the seed to here, it's a, the one right before the two. Same thing here, kind of right there. This should be moved down a little bit more, but nothing too crazy. We're gonna keep her. I like to give a nice like press down. It is a little prickly, so fair warning. And then I'm going to take my frog tape. This is good to go, but we are going to continue finishing the black seeds. Now they're all done, so immediately remove all of the tape and stencils. So satisfying. And then the last step is to seal your doormat. You can either seal it with clear flex seal or a spray sealant, which both are linked in the video description. But this is the final result of how to create a colored doormat with your Cricut. I hope this tutorial helped, and if you loved it, please give a comment, like, and subscribe to my channel to see more tutorials like this one. Now go make your very own colored vibrant doormat and if you do please tag me and share it with me on instagram or here on youtube thank you for watching today's video and i will see you in the next tutorial bye